Hey, this is Jared Cochran with Family Church. Welcome to our podcast. I'm excited that you're here. I hope that God moves through this message to reach you so he can move through your life. Be sure to share and subscribe so that we can reach the world with God's word. Enjoy the message. Welcome to another wonderful Wednesday on The Family Room. I am joined today by none other than Kelsey on the couch. Hashtag Kelsey on the couch, finally there. My beautiful (laughs) wife, Kelsey Cochran. Let us know. There's your name. It's official. Let us know where you're watching from real quick. I'll, uh, I'll fire off the announcements before we get in here. We, uh, we have the Youth Move Me Night coming up. It is now on Friday, May the 18th from 6 to 8. Uh, we are going to watch The Passion of the Christ. I'm just kidding. We're not going to watch that. Um, it's a great movie, but not uh, for, for kids. Uh, the next Dining with Dignity is June 6th from 5.30 to 6.30. The next Women's Fellowship Night is June 13th from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. And the men's, men's uh, fam group, The Beast Feast. I'm excited about this one. Uh, the Beast Feast on June 22nd. That's 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. I don't know. Am I allowed to say what all is going to be at that? No. No? Okay. You well, also missed gonna, May 18th. May, what's May 18th? The 4S. The 4S. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't have that section of the events pulled up. I can't oh. see it on my phone. It's 12 to 5. 12 to 5, the 4S thing. Um, the Men's Beast Feast. Uh, that's going to be fun. That's on our website under the events. If you guys want to look that up. But uh, yeah, let us let us know. I forgot where my notes are on And here. the marriage. Uh, the ma- Yes, the marriage thing. When is, is that? the following weekend. The following weekend. Friday. Friday. The- what's the date? <laughs> the 28th. <laughs> the 28th. The 28th. And then the 29th. The 20th. And the 29th. And that is a Saturday. Fed. They're they're feeding us? Mm-hmm. That's great. I'll definitely show up because they're Sushi. feeding us. Sushi? No. Oh, you had me. You could have played that off. <laughs> I was like, wow. We're going to have a lot of people sign up. No. Uh, today, our lovely uh, current lead pastor, <laughs> he's on vacation Taking some much well, needed he, time he off. He wants you guys to think he's on vacation. He's actually overseas getting cosmetic procedures. Done. Yes. Um, he wants hair again. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> on his chest. On his chest. <laughs> just not his head. Just his chest. He's going to love watching this. Yes. Uh, oh, and just a heads up. This one is not live. We will be at the time this airs at a softball tournament for Carolyn. Our lovely daughter, uh, who's at the, this is the championship game against the Makos, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm praying they uh, win, and it's going to take a God-given miracle for them to do so. <laughs> They're doing great. The Makos are, uh, we'll not get into that, because that'll, that'll, my flesh will come out. They're basically cheating. They have. <laughs> <laughs> Just straight to it. It's no, I mean, you're not, you're kind of not wrong, but yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, he's, he's not out today. We decided to, uh, instead of canceling it, we wanted to brave the storm together and, this. and Kelsey is this. very <laughs> uncomfortable. So probably be a short one, but, uh, I, I'm excited. This past week was mother's day. The sermon was mothers to others. And, uh, Jared didn't give me anything for mother's day. Uh, what? I actually had to cook my own breakfast. Well, make my own coffee. You do that. You mm-hmm. cook breakfast every Did morning. Did my own laundry by myself. First world problems. <laughs> uh, well, what's funny is, okay, so <laughs> I'm so <laughs> off track. The first thing uh, that I wrote down when I was listening to it, and I listened to it again this morning, was uh, towards the beginning, and it was such a call out for men, and I was like, I- I've got to mention this uh, on the family room, was that you can't be a man unless you learn how to respect women. I made a clip out of that. Did you? Uh-huh. I'm excited to see it, because we are in such a mess with society, Just uh, and-, and you've harped on it on your Facebook a lot, where men, you know, there's just like this feminization of women, and it's not that women aren't capable because obviously like you, there's, there's independent women out there that uh, they're very capable. They don't need to rely on someone. It's just kind of like an added blessing to have someone, but there's been such a decline in manliness that men don't even know how to obviously respect women. I don't even think they know how to respect themselves anymore. And so it just, it stood, it stood out to me that I was like, I, I really need to mention that because men, we, we need to learn how to respect women again. They do, so much for us. They're a gift from God, you know, that came out of our side to stay by our side, to stick through us 
thick and thin. Kelsey's wonderful. She cooks me a uh, delicious breakfast every morning without even asking, even when she's mad at me, she'll still get out there <laughs> and make breakfast. No, All this morning we were out of eggs. I was a little upset about that, that we were out of eggs because I'm used to it. But well, men I think need to that's, respect women. That is kind of a rabbit hole to go under because it's almost the issue of, you know, the chicken or the egg. Because if you think about it, you know, I wasn't, I've always been kind of a loner, but I haven't always been super independent in relationships because um, you just don't naturally really start off like that. You kind of go through traumatic events to where you learn, and this isn't right, but you learn you literally can't trust anyone. And so it's best to just do it by yourself because you know, if you mess up what you're doing for yourself, it's not as bad as, um, you know, someone else letting you down. So it kind of, why are you doing that with your eyes? I'm smiling at you. <laughs> um, you kind of, it, it's a learned behavior. And then with the men, you have men that, you have men that experience these traumatized women and they obviously didn't traumatize the women. And then they kind of back down and shut off because they think, well, she wants to do it. So then it becomes just this cycle. So if both sides would just kind of grow up and maybe um, do some self-reflecting and realize, you know, this person probably has a past and not... Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. No, we've all got everything kinda, about us. It, can, it, it gets pretty... Oh well, yeah, you could dive deep, down there. Uh, you know? But then, uh, I didn't mean to cut you off. But that no, you're you're right on the money because we all everybody has. I think at the at the most simplest I can think to like sum that up is we're all we almost always make ourselves the center of our story to where we forget the other characters that are along with mm. us, and uh, <laughs> so it's. We don't realize, you know, we're, we're always so wrapped up in what, what we're doing, what we're going through that we don't ever think, okay, I don't well, know always what's be going the on. Most traumatic, like you always want to be the most injured person in the room. Me? No, no, oh, not I'm you. Like, I'm just saying like most people. <laughs> Welcome to the family room. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting to do this. <laughs> it's going to be just a big therapy session. No, it's, it's, this is totally off topic, but it's, it, most people want to be the most you know, traumatized person in the room. They want to be the most, you know, victimized. Most people do because it gets, you get the most pity. You get the mm -hmm. most. Um, it's probably, it just stems from um, wanting uh, validation and attention that they mm -hmm. go out and they seek it. in. I mean, and that leads to, uh, I'd say on both sides of the coin, men and women, it would lead to um, how we seek out nasty things in people. Uh, just because we, um, what's the word I'm looking for? We, we just kind of like accept behavior that's done towards us because we're, we're just so desperate for validation or attention mm -hmm. or love. Um, you know, there's that phrase that a lot of us in America or a lot of people in America are, uh, oversexed and underloved. And then there's the thing with men that there's so many men that grew up without a father. So they don't have that fatherly role model to help guide them. Or you have, um, you know, a, a father that may have been just completely disconnected, connected, or just didn't show you how to do anything, or he was abusive. So there's all of these variables that go into people's lives to where we get stuck in the rut of, you know, we're so wrapped up in our day to day that we don't realize that every single car that we pass on the side on, on the road has someone in it that's going through God knows what and has gone through God knows what. And it's just, that's the, 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 side, the, the downside is just that we, we need to get back to that biblical role model of loving others as we love ourselves. And, you know, maybe a part of that is getting back to just loving ourselves. I actually, I saw there's some like story thing that pops up on Snapchat and there was a story on there. Uh, it's just like one of those things where it's like text and voiceover. And it was like some guy and his wife, they had, they had a, a good relationship and he traveled a lot for work. And then she ended up having an affair, but with another woman. And then she felt bad when he came back, <laughs> Wow! <laughs> came back and told him about it. And it just like completely crushed him. And their marriage, like, you know, just 
had this huge wall in between them and he was whatever there was all these issues and, and the hurt and everything and they were just completely distant and then they finally uh they finally sat down or she sat down with him because she was like trying to make it right and prove to it like she quit the job that the lady was at like completely did everything to show him like you know, I know I messed up. I'm sorry. I want to make this work. Like she was trying, but he was just so hurt and he was still dealing with it. And I don't know the timeline, but she finally sat down and like just got real and raw with him about her emotions and her feelings and all that. And then they made the decision to go to therapy and through I mean, the therapy. therapy step one. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why they took know. so long to get to it, but everybody grieves in different ways, I guess. Um, but they just, they went through the therapy and through being able to sit with someone else and voice various things and, you know, in an open environment where it's not going to lead to a non-biased you know, environment. Yeah. Non-biased Don't environment. sit down with your friend. Yeah. <laughs> and cause your friend's going to back you up. Hopefully. Yeah. And they'll give you bad advice. Almost not every time. back up probably your husband. It, yeah. Non, but the, the thing we, you said a couple minutes ago where we need to get back to the biblical thing. Um, the big, yeah, that part, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's, I think that if we really went back to, and this is, we just went completely left field. Like it's we went mom's room. psych. It's family room. They, everybody <laughs> loves so they the input from um, everything. It's so just nice to it's, converse. And I never felt, you know, the, the, the biblical way of, um, what is it? Proverbs 31. Yes. I don't know, maybe, <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. So you're right. Sure. You're right. Um, uh, no, where it talks about the husband's role and then the wife's role. So I don't think that's probably. No. Right. Oh, I thought you were saying like the Proverbs 31 women thing. I don't remember. No, I'm I, drawing I was, a blank on the, on which one you're talking about. Somebody uh, will chime in the comments cause you put me on the spot and I'm like, Ugh. so, but yeah, the, you're the husband's school. role and the, you know, everybody yeah. always, Ooh, husbands. Yeah, and that to me, um, like from personal experience, I absolutely would never cook anybody breakfast because really, well, you're, I feel a, like you're a whole grown man. Now. You can cook your own breakfast and you also are rude. I'm not going to say the word. I was <laughs> say um, but I, I never, um, I'm not going to say servant wise, but I never wanted to serve a man because I mean, maybe it was my choices and it probably <laughs> was, but I never really had someone that, you know, I felt happy about doing that and naturally wanted to do it because if I did it for a little bit, I'm not going to say you didn't get anything back, but I mean, being honest, you, I didn't get anything back and I ended up just being, you know, I took care of every situation and took care of him and they just run with it and well, you're the, you're the old lady, you're the wifey, you know, how the, you know, mm -hmm. that guy, that's my old lady or whatever. Yeah, the old and ball and chain. It's all a, all like, negative okay, phrasing. You know what? You say that <laughs> in front of Bill and Bob, but then we get home and you're like, Oh, I need a hot Curling shower. up on Can your, you on your lap. Shower? It's like, no, bro. Pet their head like um, a small child. Yeah. So it honestly, when you, I can honestly say when you're in a relationship where the man is doing that part and I mean, it's taken you a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it, it kind of came naturally, I think for you, when you started getting back into the Bible, like mm -hmm. when you started really doing that, it came naturally for you. Like I didn't have to say anything and you really shouldn't have to say anything because no. you don't want to be a nag, um, which is, you know, super fun. It really is fun. I love nagging you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. It's great. So, uh, no, it's, it comes naturally. So you'll find yourself because I used to read the Bible like, okay, I got to remember that I'm supposed to do this and this, and you make it a checklist. So that kind of tells you that you're not really, you're not really living it out mm -hmm. because you shouldn't have to sit here and memorize your checklist. Um, if your dad was here, he'd be like, that'll preach. <laughs> <laughs> I'm preaching this before I get out of here. I'm going to write that I'll down. I'll that. He'll do his little <laughs> eyebrows up like he does on the reels. There you go. But breathes in. No, you're you're exactly but, right. Yeah, and so it it comes supernaturally and not supernaturally. No, you were right. It comes supernaturally. So because I, I, that, and that's where I was going to take it was there's so many people we, we you know that that's not reading the Bible you know that's it's like the world when you're in the world you're of the world and there's just complete 
everything about relationships yeah, like I can in the tell world if I don't do are completely broken. Or do devotionals every day. Yeah. I can tell. And like, that's the thing with not being in the word, the word doesn't get in you and it doesn't transform you. And you start being transformed by the world instead of the word. And the world has such a bro- <laughs> I wasn't trying to do that. Um, like Jim in the office. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you know, I mean, you listen to to a lot of the popular music, and it's like super degrading towards women. Oh, it's a, so. And I don't even know we got I've back like cut it. before we got back into church. Like I would work out to. We're not going to say <laughs> <laughs> because if my mom's watching, I mean, uh, anyway. So I used to listen to you know. Pump up the jam. It, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and it, you don't really think about it, but it's, if I go to put any of that on now, you're like, Oh, ew. It's, you it's just kind of, you kind of recoil Yeah. and it's not, I mean, it's a real thing. You literally recoil and just kind of, ah, well, it says when you're in it and, and you know, a lot like, of people that use gr- the excuse, you're like, you're like oh, I'm just listening to the, the music, not really the words, but it's still getting in it's there subconsciously. <laughs> yeah. It's still getting in there subconsciously. And then when you step out of it, it's kind of, you know, like like he uh, mentioned Sunday that he hadn't had sugar because he's doing that ridiculous carnivore diet. No, he hasn't had sugar because <laughs> he does this every time before a trip, cosmetic That's surgery. Right. And he's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Can't stop it. You can't stop me. You're not here. Um, no. So every before every trip, he does this before the cruise last time. Literally. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. And for every trip. Right. Stick with it, Dad. Yeah, uh, Dad, stick with it. <laughs> no, because I've plate, done Dad. I've done like the Daniel fast a couple times, which is just uh, fruits and veggies and water, and generally for 21 days. And when you get done, I remember one time I did it, and uh, when I finished, I went to have like a Snickers or something, and I took like that was your choice. One Snickers. bite, yeah, I like that Snickers, was, was especially the peanut butter Snickers. Uh, you know, and somebody will comment and be like, "This is terrible for your body, and you need to take care of the temple of the Lord." I still you like sound Snickers. just like that. yes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> My voice was giving out. Um, <laughs> that's like how I imagine they sound. That's how I read nasty comments. So there's always some some voice that I'll put with it. I really hope you guys can hear uh, this chair squeaking <laughs> every time. I oh, I hear it every time when we're doing it with him. And it's like, mm. sorry, um, I won't breathe. But yeah, I went to have the sugar. And we'll get back to the message in a minute. But I went to have the sugar. <laughs> and uh, I just remember it was like, holy cow. Like when you disconnect from it and then you go back to it, it's it's like that. It's, re- it's repulsive. You recoil from it. So that's just the thing, like even with music, like whatever you're putting, because I guess you can, you know, technically argue that's hey, putting it into your body because, you know, like not physically, but it's still getting in you. Like and when the you snap get out TV of it. shows and yeah. stuff. I used to watch the, you know, the serial killer thing I was just obsessed with. And then it would be, I would watch it when I got home. And then, remember, I mean, it'd be like every You'd night. Have and horrible then, nightmares yeah. and everything. I'm like, and I then, think it's what you're watching on TV. No. When I was driving around <laughs> doing the, the, <laughs> driving around doing the, uh, home health, like my podcast would be mm-hmm. the, um, two girls. I don't remember what it was called. I know, yeah, the, but yeah. And yeah, it was just about, they one. would just talk about a certain, you know, murder or a serial killer. And I was just fascinated by it, you know, and, you know, taking tips, writing stuff down, not um, how to kill people. Let's, I was going that, that way. I was oh, making a joke. Okay. I was going to say, well, somebody's like, whoa, <laughs> Kelsey is really into psychology and stuff like that. Let's, so, let's disclaimer. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> and I started, I mean, it was, the nightmares were mm-hmm. bad. They were, yeah, I remember it was, it, it was, was really, really bad. And I'd wake up in the middle of the night seeing stuff and, and it was finally just, Hey, maybe this is a problem. And then now we watch cooking shows. Yeah. I'm ready to not do that our kids right now are obsessed what is it is it cake yeah and it's cool for like 10 minutes but by like the fourth episode in a row i'm like can we watch it's that guy from saturday night live and he tries to be funny yeah it's not and it's not not funny the i am i'm compelled by the uh the skill level and the artistry that these people have because i can't do that i can't draw it's fake uh yeah what, what is, oh, is it? It's reality TV. You're telling me reality TV is fake. It's fake. That can't be real. So, Sunday's message. <laughs> Way to get off track. Mothers to others. Welcome to how we have conversations. <laughs> That's the family room this week is a, a backseat pass to Kelsey and I. People are like, unsubscribe, right? unsubscribe. I'm getting unsubscribe. out of here. Uh, 
So I want to go through the four affirmations. Um, it's okay to feel let down, but don't stay there. Goodness, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Every yeah, <it's, laughs> never mind. That um, yeah. I think well, so okay. I'll it, give you a launch point. I think a big problem with uh, a lot of people, and probably especially in Christian households, is. They think that you you can't feel despair, that you can't feel sadness. You're always supposed to have one emotion, and that is the joy of the Lord. You know, like you you can only be happy, and I think that's such a good affirmation or a realization, whatever you want to call it. That it's okay to feel sad. It's okay to feel let down. Don't stay well, there. We were given a range of emotions. If we were given, it, we were given them for a reason. We're supposed to feel all of them. And or else we wouldn't have, have them. them or the capability to have them, I guess. But it's you have to learn how to deal with them. Like I said the other day, you need to learn what your trigger points are. If you don't know what your weaknesses are, you don't know what your because we all have weaknesses, you know, and sometimes we focus on them more because, well, it just depends on how you're raised, I guess. You know, a lot of people focus on their strengths a lot more because they are little someone's going to take this really badly. <laughs> they were, you know, there may be more tendency to be narcissistic. So they're going to be, well, I mean, yeah, I've got a couple people in my head right now that I'm thinking of, but you know, we'll leave that for when we end, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and then you have the people that focus on their weaknesses a lot, maybe because they have literally no self-worth. I mean, it's easier for me to sit there and say all the stuff that I'm bad at. And, um, but but you remember too, like in the youth, when we did that one thing, uh, was identity or whatever. And we had mm -hmm. them name, uh, some strengths and name weaknesses. It's a whole lot easier to say what you're bad at than to find what mm -hmm. you're good at. And well, because people don't really tell you what you're good at. They tell you what you're bad at. Yeah. So you hear from the outside what you're bad at a lot more than you hear what you're good at because people really don't. And I'm not saying everybody, but people really don't like giving compliments to people that they're threatened by. So nine times Ooh, out of say 10. Say that again. I don't remember what I said, so I won't. People don't like giving, <laughs> oh, that was heavy right there. I'm just, people they, don't like giving compliments to people that they feel threatened by. Or there'll be backhanded compliments. Yeah. Meant to which hurt is, you. Exactly. Yep. No. Yeah. That's, that's a bad one. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the thing. Like, you're, you know, uh, you're not stuck unless you stop kind of thing. So it's okay to feel dis and, and that's, um, I don't want to give too much away, but the message that we got on the church page, that was the sad situation. And mm. they felt um, they had something happen to a family member that passed away. And um, and I've, I've mentioned it before that I've talked with somebody and they're almost like afraid to get real with God. They're afraid to pour everything out. And I think that's the, like, that's the thing they think you know, like, oh, I can't talk to God. And it's like, he already but knows he, he, he literally everything. Already knows. Exactly. He so knows what you're going to say, how you're feeling and everything. He just wants you to bring yeah. it to him. And that's what some, something I realized when I was responding to them. I was like, you know, like we're okay with opening up to each other. Like I'm you're okay with super mad at somebody this. on the internet. Yeah. And all and this, but then like, dumb, oh, I can't bring can. this to God. Like, yeah. no, he wants you to get real with him. And yeah. I, and that's one of the things I told him. I was like, you look at the Psalms, David, all the time when he was going through something, he's like, you know, like, this is terrible. I feel like I'm dying. Yada, yada. It was just like all this bad stuff. And it's like, if, if we weren't uh, supposed to feel that kind of way, like you were saying, we wouldn't have been given that emotion and God, the Bible being, uh, but that doesn't give you an it, excuse to be willy nilly. Well, exactly. And just run around and be like, I'm just naturally an angry person. Well, and no, God that's gave different. me anger, so no. I can punch you in the face. That's toxic. Yes. But if, if it's <laughs> in the Bible, it's there for a reason. Everything that's in the Bible is there for a reason. And the fact that God left in these Psalms that David wrote in his darkest moments of how he felt, but then still knowing and trusting God, that that's God would deliver him. And then knowing that David was a man after God's own heart, you know, mm -hmm. we see that Jesus felt anxiety and anguish toward going towards the cross. He, he felt grief over the loss of Lazarus. You know, Jesus wept the shortest uh, verse in the Bible. Like he went through range every of range of emotions that we have. He went through, the Bible says, you know, that he was tested in everything like we are tested and he overcame it so that we can too. And it's just, that's the thing. Like it's okay to feel something. It's, it's just not okay to stay there.
It's okay to be there for a moment, but God wants you to move past that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the, uh, the second point was, from God's point of view, you are the exact mother that they need. That one hit you hard? Yeah. From God's point of view, you are the exact mother they need. That's why he gave them to you. And what really that. like hit me was don't be perfect, be their mom. Yeah. I called it the pickup line perfection. Pickup like, line? You've been hanging out with me, making up all the... Um, No, you got that stuff from me. Pickup line perfection. Like, <laughs> yeah, pickup, I mean, it's... Oh, I okay. experienced uh, you pick up li- like the grocery. I was like, like he literally talked in the sermon on yeah, the school pickup line. Bro. Yeah, I. <laughs> well, when you said I don't know for some reason when you said pickup line, I was thinking pickup line. Someone hitting on you? Yeah, not me, <laughs> but just like that's where my brain was like, what? Well, no, I remember. Yeah, the, the pickup line. And the, <laughs> the pickup line perfection. No, you're right. No, it's it is probably out of. I would say out of all four. Well, number four was kind of, blah. but I would say out of all four, this one is the, was the most, um, ouchy. Ouchy for you. And to be honest, my question though, for him, it was, how okay, dare you think that you're not a mother? No, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, was what about the moms that abandoned their children and drug abuse and are not good mothers. So that, I mean, that ties to me, in like, okay, with number four some. But I heard for number four. I'll, we'll get there. Go ahead. I don't want to cut you off. You had a thought. How is that kind of? I'll, okay. We'll get there. Um, <laughs> so to me, my thought process was like, is that really the mother that that child needs? But then I thought, you know, okay, what if big picture – That mother, and I'm not going to say that God makes someone a drug addict on Mm -hmm. purpose because I don't think that that would be, no. So (laughs) maybe, you know, he allowed that to happen because he obviously sees the future and knows that child, wherever that child would go, like the foster family that they would go to or like the grandparents, you know, Um, think about Caitlin, you know, the grandparents that they would go to to live with, to be raised by would maybe alter that child's life for better because the mother made that decision. So that would be the mother that that child would need. That's really dark, but just no, thought. No, you're but right. Um, I, just to me, like the biggest thing that I've had since I became a mom was just, you're not good enough because you don't put a baby bow or, you know, a bow in your kid's hair. You don't dress your kid's hair in the matching outfits dress your kid's hair. You don't dress your kid in the matching outfits. You don't, I don't care about certain things that I see mothers all around me caring about. But what are they, I don't want to, I don't want to I'm just telling you my insecurities, people. like this is why this affected me because I have a huge insecurity and in the situation we're going through, walking through right now, you know, with, you know, Carolyn mm-hmm. and her father, you know, um, that situation of getting harped on that basically a magnifying glass on my mothering and someone saying to me, you're not a good mom, you're a horrible mother. I know someone that could do better, you know, that type of, I'm not quoting anything for legal issues at this point in time, (laughs) but just, you know, being totally pulled out and ripped apart and just, uh, judged on every level of parenting that one can possibly be unfairly judged on um, really makes you insecure. And it makes every single decision and every single step you take like, oh my gosh, is this right? And it's like, okay, right to who? You know, right to an angry little man or right to God? You know, who is this? You know? No, you're right. Uh I'm no, trying not got to more? say too much. Well, so my thing is with that. And I also feel called out because I have three horse stickers <laughs> uh, on the back of my car. So when cat, he cat, said, cat, dog, cat, dog, cat, dog. cat, dog, 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 I was like, <laughs> I was <so> mad. <laughs> no, you've got a whole lot of animals. You got half the zoo on the back of that car. But um, <laughs> my car is also very dirty. So is my truck. Um, my thing with, and, and 
not that there's anything wrong with dressing your kids in matching outfits or anything like that, but I think the problem is we live in such a, an Instagram filtered social media society where I think a lot of people, unfortunately, do these things just for the, the clout on the, on the internet to look like the perfect family. And more often than not, the people that yell the loudest and, uh, you know, speak the loudest and want to discredit the loudest, they're always doing the least. You see it everywhere from, from jobs and careers. You see it in, in churches constantly that nitpick every little thing, but they're always the ones that are just coming in. They're not doing a single thing at all. They're just, it's easy to be a backseat driver kind of thing. And there's just that unfortunate, there's the unfortunate uh, reality that we're in right now where everybody will, will do that. We'll dress the kids up. We'll get this and, you know, we'll put it on Instagram after we took 97 photos to make sure everybody was smiling, even again, though we were all cussing nothing, each other out in the background. wrong with that. No, and I'm not but saying that, but don't say where's I'm your not heart a good in mom because I don't want to live like you're living. Yeah, that's the problem like, because there's different, there's different personalities. Mm -hmm. And so there's like, yeah, that's great. You can dress your children up. That's great. You can do this. You can do that. Are you meeting their needs? Psychologically. Are you meeting their needs are you, are you loving them like they need to a be loved an adult exactly and are you living out your childhood through your children you know mm -hmm. something that you didn't go through and that's you know that's something like you're saying like uh like a drug addicted mother or something somebody that that just doesn't love their kids that gave up their kids someone that's not fit to be their kids mm -hmm. obviously um you know, in a perfect world, that wouldn't have been the case. They wouldn't be addicted to drugs. But unfortunately, the devil has created well, side all of note, this stuff and problems. Side note, you want to talk about childhood. You know, their drug addiction may be because their something parents in their, didn't break yeah. the cycle. And it brought it on to them. So, and God's using I'm not something saying that that's every situation. It. No, there's always your parents are awesome. different not, things. You know, yeah, we're not going to go there. But, um, yeah. It's, it's, it's hard for me to see and just being completely blunt. Like it's really hard for me to see. It's hard for me to see the moms that physically bounce back after having a baby and they just look, and that's just me being brought like, it's hard. And I'm looking at it. And of course it's on social media. I'm looking at, it, I'm like, <laughs> and they drive like a really nice SUV that doesn't have, you know, a huge dent in the side from animals kicking it and you know it doesn't smell like nachos and it you know they go to yoga every other day and those kids are probably so bored in that car every done. time they get going in that car because they can't do anything except and again the there's so nothing quiet. wrong with it that's just me saying that's my insecurities of looking at it and secretly wishing like man i wish i could but i don't care like you have to have a <laughs> you have to have a level of caring to achieve that every day, like yeah. to go get your nails done every two weeks. I, it's a joke when I get my nails done, I'll put it on Snapchat and send it to my friends and I have everybody guess how long they'll last. And everybody about, answers uh, to two the days, end of the afternoon, uh, three days. Every and time it's you just paint them at the house, joke. you start going and doing something with the horses and they're already <laughs> falling off. Well, I don't know. But, <laughs> Um, yeah, that to me, that's very difficult. So when he said that it was very much, it very much hit home because, you know, I'm in a situation right now where there's another, there's another mother involved who is that, you know, perfect little image and is looking down on me because it's a miracle I wear shoes sometimes. You know, um, <laughs> are you wearing any right now? I'm not wearing any right now. <laughs> <laughs> the wonders of TV. <laughs> so, you know, and it's, it, it's, I think that feeling that I have is you'd be surprised how many mothers and maybe even those mothers feel the same exact way, but nobody's talking about it. Of course not. Because no. if you talk about it, it's, oh, don't, don't judge. Because it's shining light on your own insecurities. It's shining light on things that you have problems with. And nobody wants to look like they have problems. And that's why we're not growing as a society because we're too busy shoving everything in the closet. Like when, you know, a company's coming over and you do that real quick, like toss everything. Don't hide your face right now. <laughs> <laughs> you shove everything in the room or in the closet and you're like, oh, the house looks great. Just don't open that door. That's how we do it with, with everything in life. We just hide everything instead of being like, hey, I'm dealing with this. I'm dealing with this. 
can you help me out? Hey, and then they're like, hey, I'm dealing with five this. Five days a week, but my kids are having fun. We're outside swimming in the pool. We are looking for worms to feed the chickens. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. It's a fun time. Um, so yes. So yes. Uh, I'm going to speed it up a little bit so we don't go too long tonight. Um, um, number three, you're never alone. Sorry, I'm bothering you. You're not. I'll sit here all day long with you. It's technically like 6.30 at night. Well, yes. Number three was you're never alone. Uh, I mean, that just right there, that, that speaks <clears throat> volumes to no people. No matter what it looks like. You're not alone is the actual quote. <laughs> number four. <laughs> number four. And We're you not going to talk about number three? I mean, yeah, go ahead. You're never alone. Okay. No matter what it looks like, you're never alone. No, uh, there, there is, uh, I mean, I think it, it goes back to a lot of what we just said. Everybody thinks that they're dealing, they're the only ones dealing with something. They're the only ones feeling insecure. They're the only ones... Uh, having issues. Everyone else looks like they're off having a wonderful time. Everyone else looks like they're off, you know, having a blast and they're able to do this and do that. You know, um, something, I think my dad used to say it all the time, like you, you see somebody, and this isn't obviously always the case, but you see somebody with a lot of nice stuff and, you know, a, a new truck, a new vehicle, new house, new swimming pool, new car, new RV, new husband. whatever. You're not getting one. Uh, <laughs> but you see some, and you know, like, what is, what is the first response? Like somebody goes and gets someone, something new and everyone's always like, Oh, must be nice. Hmm. It's like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It probably is nice. You're also not counting the cost. You don't know what's in their bank account. They could have all this stuff. And also you remember the old commercial I'm in debt up to my eyeballs. I wasn't allowed to watch TV when I was little. That was not, I don't remember when that was. It probably was a long time ago, but it feels like it wasn't that long. So <laughs> there's my age. Well, there was that kidding, guy Mom, and he was upset. like, oh, I've okay. got a perfect lawn and a new lawnmower and a big house. And he's like, how do I do it? Lawnmower. I don't know. He's mowing the grass on the commercial. I'll show it to you later. <laughs> They'll remember. Shout it out if you remember that commercial. He's like mowing the lawn and he's like, oh, I've got a new pool. I've got a new house or whatever, blah, blah, blah. I've got all this nice stuff. And he's like, how do I do it? And he's like, I'm in debt up to my eyeballs. Meanwhile, his wife is cheating on him with another woman. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different story. Just kidding. But... I mean, that's just the case. Like, okay, yeah, more money, more problems. You could have all the stuff in the world, and but honestly, you could still feel they, dead inside. They, they, they could be financially just fine. Again, not your life. Nope. And you're living the life that you are supposed to live in, you know? Exactly. And it's really yeah. easy. I mean, that's one of the tactics I think of the enemy is... Uh, jealousy, is, comparison. Is jealousy, comparison, exactly. Like he gives people because then you focus on easy that. lives. He gives people easy lives because he knows... If I give them everything that they they need, I they don't I don't have to worry about them looking towards God. Yeah. If there's no suffering in their life, they're not going to look for greater meaning. They're going to think they have it all together mm. until they die, and then it's like, oh, well, I, I didn't realize I was doing this wrong. Oh, I and, went and to that's church on Sunday. Not the, yeah, it's checking the box, yeah. and that's that's the thing with the Bible. It's not about checking a box. That's when you said that earlier. I was immediately thinking of like the Pharisees just doing everything on the list to think that. That was the thing with the Pharisees was they thought by following all the rules, they didn't need Jesus because as long as they did what was right, they would be their own savior kind of thing. And that's mm -hmm. the whole thing with like just checking the list, you know, and it's not about that. It's about getting closer to God, getting closer to Jesus and realizing he is the only way to heaven. And the, I don't know why this popped in my head, but it is literally, we are raised to we are we are conditioned that we have to behave good to get rewards because mm -hmm. literally look at Santa. Yeah. It's in the song. I mean, it's yeah. you, you literally have to be good. He's checking the list and twice. you have to twice. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's checking. The, I'm never doing this. <laughs> he's checking the list twice. And, um, uh, you know, we, I didn't really grow up with, I don't really remember Santa too much. I think that ended pretty quickly, but, um, you are, but most kids, I mean, I had high schoolers in my eight, like that's okay. still, we're doing we're, all that. Yes. Yes. Wow. That we're still, you know, fully believing in Santa. And it was, you know, you, you act really, you know, you act good and, um, you'll get a present or 50 or 5,000 or whatever. And, um, you know, all different kind of households, but, uh, 
<laughs> so you have that and it's, and it depends on what, what, what church you grew up in too. you know, good deeds. You have to do this. You have to do this. It's all a checklist. And then at home, you know, you complete your chores, you do this, you do this, you get an allowance at the end of the week. Everything is driven to workspace you, rewards. You, mm-hmm. Yep. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> workspace <laughs> rewards. And that is not what Christianity is all yeah. about. A lot so of people have think to break it's that Jesus cycle and breaking something. that cycle as an adult is Yeah. It's hard. conditioning. That's, that's the point yep. of conditioning is the, the, the younger you start, the harder it is to break a cycle. I, I mean, obviously you see it with, with addictions and mm. all that kind of stuff uh, in any capacity. It doesn't have to be just drugs. You can get addicted to any sorts of things. You can you get can addicted, addicted to, to social media, social media your out. phone. I was about to say that working out in the gym, you can get addicted to eating. There's all kinds of things that you can get <laughs> addicted to. And, uh, you know, it, things are, that's the whole point of moderation. It's good to have things in moderation, but it's a, it's success that can lead to a lot of the problems. Uh, number four. So can we, can we move on to this one? I'll allow it. <laughs> number four, you are making an impact. You are making an impact. That one too, because I feel like I'm an absolute train wreck sometimes with the girls and it, you're not a train wreck. Okay. And <laughs> You know, it, it's hard to everything that I do, if I say something, I'm like, oh, great, just ruin them for life, you know, and it's, yeah, that it, it's hard. It, you think about it as a mom, you think about it a lot because you want to be this little gentle lamb that tucks them in at night and is just, you know, floating around the house, taking care of all the needs, cooking them breakfast. Here you go, pumpkin pie. Have a good day at school. Yeah, that's and I'm one more aspect. like, get ready. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, and it's you want to be this gentle. You know, your dad talks about um, his mom a lot, and I'm like, <sighs> you know, she never said an unkind. You know, all this stuff. And it's I'm probably like, just blocking it out. Oh. Um, you know, it's a little intimidating. <laughs> No, uh, I mean, we, we, you know, we said it earlier, there's, there's so many different types of personalities. Uh, and obviously that also ties into different types of parenting. There's mm. different kinds of parenting, but then you see, I mean, uh, spare, like the Bible says, spare the rod, spoil the child. And I'm not saying here, beat your kids, mm. but when all you're doing is showering your children with gifts and you're never giving them any type of discipline, they're not developing anything or to be have, or uh, love. yeah, or to, to attention yeah. or love. You're not building their their character or you know traits that they'll take into their adulthood for just their career and their friendships and it's just like that's great to have this and it's great to have this but you can't have just the one or the other you have to have the mesh of the both you know giving them love but giving them discipline well and connect uh, uh, oh, I lost the word discipline you know and um, just making sure that those two things are intertwined like Meshing. you said a meshing, a balance. You have to balance everything out to create a well-rounded person yeah. and so they're not just, you know, some entitled Turning 18 person and they're that's, just completely yeah. snowballing into... I lost what I was going to say. <laughs> well, it's like, I mean, just, you see it with all the, 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 the adults and stuff that are out now. It's like, it's just like... All the adults that are just out now running amok. <laughs> <laughs> all the adults. They let them loose. <laughs> no, the, like the, like, you know, the people that they call the term like Karens and things like that, where it's just all these entitled people. Mm -hmm. I saw, I literally, I saw a clip earlier. Um, what you got to think about, the Karens are just like really scared, hurt, defensive little children. Yeah. I mean... Some, some are just nasty, mean people. Yeah, but what makes a nasty, mean person? We don't have enough time to go into all of that. Okay. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, just like spoiled stuff where that it creates that entitlement where they think that they can't be questioned or corrected. Mm. Uh, I, I saw a, a real short thing earlier. There was a guy. Can't be corrected. On a, what? What? Um, <sighs> there was a guy. It was like a police body cam and these, this they look like a super rich older couple had they, this guy was just standing on the sidewalk, you know, like a cardboard sign and they called the cops on him and he wasn't doing anything wrong. And the cop goes back to him and he's like, you know, he's, he's on public property. He's not doing anything wrong. And they're like, you, you can't do anything. He's like, no, I'm not going to infringe on this man's rights. And the lady like chuckles and she's like, Oh, his rights. And it's like, 
yeah, there's still people. <laughs> like, Dang, Becky. That's just the, the problem. And what I added or would add. So the Saying point that was. his sermon was not complete, you think? No. But when he said it, it's st- it struck a chord him. in me. <laughs> but you're making an impact. And what I would, you know, to me, the question is, what, what type of impact are you making? Oh, because you can make a bad impact. Exactly. Like the thing that you spoke on, that's why I was saying it goes into number four, the, mm-hmm. the drug addicts or something. They're making the wrong impact for their children. So you are making an impact no regardless. Matter, exactly. But you got to check yourself and see which type of impact you, you're making. Exactly. Do you, you want to make a good trauma? impact? Or you want to make a bad impact? Are you creating a household that is full of, of love and nurturing mm-hmm. and you're caring for your children? Or does your house look like a, a, a hoarding a tornado went through there and it's just completely unfit for living? Our house oh. does not look like that. But, well, and it, you know, it's Riley's unfit for it. living and, you know, like you're, you're, you're smoking and drinking and yeah. you, your kids are five Watching years old. That making their own breakfast and doing everything for themselves. Mm-hmm. And they're basically, you know, a teenager at, at six, you know, you are making well, an impact no yeah. matter what it is doing. It is shaping some part of their life. Mm-hmm. And that's where we need to take accountability as adults and parents and it's mothers. Hard to, it's to hard cultivate to separate. That. It's hard to separate when you're a young adult, you know, cause I would say we're young adults. I mean, I am Kelsey's older than me. By six months. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say it, it's very difficult to like the situation we're going through right now. You know, it is a daily fight to not bring that into like to completely shield that from the kids. Mm-hmm. You know, I can just be having the worst day because of, you know, what we're going through. Not like me and you, but, you know, our family is going through and to literally almost disassociate when you're around the kids and when you're dealing with the kids so that they have no clue what's going on is really hard. And like, we both have to do that every day, you know, especially when we have it coming from both sides, you know, yeah. both other houses. Mm-hmm. And it's when it ha- when that happens, it, it's blended families are tough and it's, yeah, you they don't get, to, they definitely don't get talked about enough. No, you have to, you literally have to completely disassociate and not let the child know because at the end of the day, like that is their other parent and you, you bringing that drama and that anger or that personal stuff, you're dealing with that other parent and you introduce it into your kid's life. They're going to go, well, what's wrong with me? Because I'm 50% that other person yeah, too. I was just about to say that's immediately what I was thinking. So you have to just, you know, your issues that you had while dating this person or married to this person or whatever have nothing to do with, with the child. They're the child. their own person. Absolutely nothing to do. And shame on you if you're going to literally introduce the child to that. Yeah, no. That's, no. that's not. No, you're, you're 100% correct. I know. No. <laughs> um, so, okay, so blended families. The, the one thing that I thought was really cool. I'm surprised they didn't bring up step parents mothers to others uh, that's yeah that's what i was about to do yeah um i know that because i read your phone last night while you were sleeping i just wrote this down this morning oh <laughs> i was trying to get you the because i listened to it again this morning so i could have uh have it fresh in my head uh well before that so he, he said motherhood is made of the of the thousands of little things um you know, and he talked about laying the kids down and, you know, praying over them and all that. It, Which it you made do me, every night with the girls. It made me think of the girls. And, and they will not let me forget. They will not let me walk out of the room. Which, not that I do forget, but, like, if I go to move. You can move, tell the people that you forget to pray. I don't forget to pray for the girls. I don't forget to pray. Uh, no, they, <laughs> they won't let me. Like, for instance, so my last night, I was trying to say goodnight because I wanted to go take a shower. And I started praying, but she was like still settling down. She's like, wait, 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 wait. And had to get like all comfy. And I was like, okay. And then same thing, you know, with Riley and Carolyn, if I, if I go to move and I'm like, hang on, I'll be right back. They're like, you didn't pray yet. Like they, they lose their minds. So they don't let me forget. But the whole thing of the, the, the message was mothers to others, Romans 16, 13. And he talked about how Rufus, his mother, uh, had been a mother to him. And uh, I thought it was really cool, the point that he made. And, you know, props to dad a little bit for digging in uh, with the Simon the Siren mm. being the father. And he was the guy that carried the cross. That's he probably cool. Googled it. 
<laughs> Chat GPT. Um, and you, you know, it was, it was Saul <laughs> who, <laughs> who terrorized people on the road to Damascus, changed to Paul. 23 years later, he's mentioning the man's mother. He didn't mention the man's father. He mentioned the man's mother, at least in this section. Mm -hmm. And that goes back to how you're making an impact. Mm -hmm. You're making an impact. And he pointed out that um, Paul would have probably been excommunicated from his own family. And here he is. Because they don't talk about it? Huh? They don't talk about his family? Because since he was... Um, persecuting the church and everything. And then he like shifted and started following Jesus. They would literally like discount. They would like, that's what he was talking about. They would have like a funeral for people sometimes. And like, just say like, basically you're dead to me. You're no longer part of this family. So now he meets, we should do that nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so he gets to this thing and, and he's, he says that Rufus, his mother is like a mother to him. So she's making an impact on his life enough that he mentions it mm. in the Bible in the word of God. And she ends up, this is not, and it's not even, I mean, it's basically like, like a stepmother because she was a mother to him and it might, you know, not like they were married or anything. Cause that would be weird. But he, well, I didn't mean like him and her. I'm saying like, he wasn't oh, like was, yeah. adopted into the family. Yeah. She was just like a mother, but she was filling, filling that hole mm -hmm. that the real mother left behind. And that was something I wrote down that stepmothers, they, a lot of times don't get the credit that they deserve because some of them, some of them, <laughs> Um, they, they are loving someone that didn't even come from them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I look at you like you're a mother to Mila a lot, stepmother, but you were like a mother to him. You, you are to her. her, you meet a lot of her needs. You love her just like your own. And to me, like that brings me so much happiness because it's like, okay, she's not your daughter, but to you, she, she is, she's like your daughter. You've never missed a, you never bat an eye, missed a beat or anything. And that's just something I think. Um, a lot of stepmothers, they don't get that credit. Like they're dealing with loving it's hard. themselves, loving yeah. their own children and loving someone else's children as if their own. And then, you know, in situations um, where the other half, the actual mother or, you know, whatever, isn't exactly... You know, it's not like a, a kosher situation. It's not the best situation. And there's contention, turmoil, and, and all of that. Bitterness. And, and it makes it, yeah, and bitterness and, and those kinds of things. It makes it harder, but it's just a testament to well, that's where the, the mother. that's where comes in. Yeah, but it's just, it's a testament yeah. to your ability and others' ability as a stepmother to not just disassociate, but still love someone yeah. as their own. And I think that, yeah, well, stepmothers I, have sermon really wasn't complete. The uh, stepmothers really have to realize, um, I see a lot of stepmoms that just try to overpower the mom, the, the real mom, and try to take all that control and try to, you know, I can do this better. You can do this better four days out of the month. Like you have four days out of the month in some parenting plans. And I'm not pointing this towards anybody at all. Blink twice. So, <laughs> no, um... You know, I'm just kidding. Um, but they try to overpower, they try to overpower the mother um, thinking they know the child better. And, you know, maybe some situations, you know, the child does vent to them a little, the stepmom a little more, um, you know, but that's okay. That doesn't mean, I, I just, I wish that moms would kind of realize, yes, you are like the bonus mom, but you are not the mom. You didn't carry that child for nine months. You didn't deliver, you know, the child or C-section, whatever the case may be. So I've always taken the standpoint with Mila. I'm just here to help. Yeah. I'm here to supplement, you know, Megan and I don't have a relationship. Um, but I'm here to supplement any decision that she's going to make. Um, I may not always agree with every decision she's going to make. The stuff she's going through right now, you know, anyways. But, um... I'm just here to kind of be the fallback plan. I'm here to be the supplement. I'm here to, that's my role. Um, you know, and as the girls are hitting puberty, I'm here to, you know, if mom is saying, you know, you can start doing this, 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 who am I to sit here when she comes to our house and say, oh, we're not doing that here, you know, when it comes to like grooming and stuff like that, you know, a little TMI, but just, you're just here to supplement. You're not here to take over. 
you know, you have to know your place. And, um, you know, I think if you a can't lot figure it, out what to do, just love the kid. Yeah. You don't have to, you don't have to do, just love the kid. Don't isolate the kid. You know. Also, I was going to say is. Treat them just the same. I and, think the problem is, ev not everybody, but a lot of people, they try to turn it into a competition. Oh, yeah. And it's not, it, it doesn't need to be a competition. Because no. like you were no. saying earlier, you know. Where She's a different mom than me. We well, don't that, have the same just the child, themselves. like but that's the people okay. that, you know, that they're bad mouthing the other parent mm. to the kid. And then it leads the kid to be like, well, do you hate me? Because, you know, that's, well, we that's my that dad. That's my Myla. mom. And it's like, you know, you, you got to stop that. Not only is that toxic, but you're also hurting the child. And it's not it's not a competition. All you need to do, whether you're a parent, step parent grandparent, whatever the case may be, is literally just love the child. Just love, just the, kid. love the child. That is and the if, only and responsibility. And if, if you're watching this and it's a blended family situation and you're the one sitting there bad-mouthing that other parent, I'm telling you right now, we are dealing with it, with Myla, how much stress she's under when she says, you know, my grandma on the other side, my mom on the, you know, said this about you. And she's, I, I don't understand because I love you. You know what I mean? And that's what she says to me or you. And it's, it's really, it takes such a psychological toll on her. It is. So and, if and you're doing don't that, realize you got to stop. Doing, what you got to stop. That is doing to the kids. Yeah. And that's why, you know, you just got to. Your baggage doesn't is matter. not their backpack. Like a hundred percent. That was good. Yeah. yeah. You like that? That was good. Oh, yeah. Good job. You. Your baggage is not their backpack. No, that's that's just the case. You you just need to only literally love the child. Let the child be just who the child is and cultivate, you know, who they will be in adulthood and support their hobbies. No matter how you feel about yeah. the other parent, the child is not the other parent. They didn't cheat on you. They didn't do they anything didn't, to you. They didn't, you know, whatever long list of what someone yeah, else, you, you know, they I'm not have any that. laundry list of things, <laughs> but they didn't do any of that. They're just your child or yeah. your stepchild. And all you need to do is love them un unconditionally because mm -hmm. kids are so innocent. Uh, I think we need to start protecting their innocence a little more, mm -hmm. especially with just how crazy society is. They don't need a TikTok. They don't need a Facebook. No, they anything. don't need, you know, phones at super young ages, uh, you know, well, and it's just, oh well, yeah. Girls have it because they go to the other yeah. house. But. Um, but just like protecting their innocence and you know the kids that they're they're not they're not doing stuff other than just loving you and they don't see these issues all they see is this is my parent this is my step parent a lot of times they might not even see it as a step parent they just see it as you're another parent to mm -hmm. them and you know uh, whether they want to call you mom or stepmom or your first name whatever they should be able to call you what they want to call you and it not hurt your feelings and it not hurt the other person's feelings. That's just what the kid wants to do. And if they see the person, it's one thing if you're forcing the kid to do that, because um, you shouldn't let them, you know, call you what they want to call you. If they're comfortable enough to call you mom, mm -hmm. even though you're their stepmom, I, I don't see anything wrong with it because it's just... They, they love you enough that they view you like a parent. You know, they know that that you're not their real parent, that you're a stepmom or whatever. Right. You know, you think of like a foster family and a kid that gets they adopted. Know. They know. Yeah. And they still will call them mom and dad. It's just they view them as that person. And it's just adults with all of our insecurities and, and stupid problems that we create more problems. And we create situations that make stress on kids. And it's just, it's putting kids under so much of a it's strain rude. that they don't need to have. Stop it. It's rude and stop it. Well, we have, uh, we really went over. <laughs> this is, uh, I don't want to like abruptly stop. But, but you are. But I am. Um, because. Did you have any more notes? No, that was, I have a little bit more, but I don't want to go too, too, too much longer. Um, I, I think it was a great talking word. talking about Jesus. You know. We've been mainly talking no, about what did, what did you, what, did, what would you say when people would complain about your sermons go too long? What would I say? Jesus preached for three days. Jesus right. preached for three days mm -hmm. at one point. So much that he had to feed them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I can go on a big rabbit hole with that because, and as I was talking to my dad about it the other day, there's a lot of people that we want to spend as little time in church as possible. Your eyebrows are like just slowly but we, going up like But uh, <laughs> here, here's my thing with people that complain about, and I'm not saying this just from me, 
uh, we're gearing up to spend eternity in heaven with Jesus. And if we can't spend a couple of hours on one day a week, what, how is eternity going to feel? Yeah. You know, like, I mean, and, and, and it's like how I view it with like the people that don't want to come to church. Oh, I believe God, you know, but I don't want to go to church. Church is not in a building. It's not, it, church is not a building, you know. Which like, I get, I get. Yeah, we are the church, I understand, but we are supposed to still come together as a community. Right. The thing is, my question or my thing is, if if you don't want to make the time for Jesus, just a couple hours, just come into church. And that's not talking about during the week. Yeah. There's so many people that we want to make no time for Jesus, but we want him to make a spot in eternity for us. We mm-hmm. want to have an endless amount of time in perfection and in heaven, oh, but and we don't want to put in any time. Yeah. While and we're here on earth. We want him to get us out of a certain situation. And, and then as soon as everything goes good, we go. Probably a situation that we put ourselves into. Exactly. You look at like the and Israelites. Then, all yeah, throughout sure. the Old Testament. That's just the entire situation. Get us out. Good for time. Yeah. Oh, we don't need God anymore because it's going good. And then it goes downhill. And then, oh, oh no, get us out, God. And, you know, it's just, it's a cycle. And it's like, mm-hmm. how much better would your life be? Not perfect because nobody said the Christian walk is going to be easy yeah. and without problems. But you're not going to be in this cycle if you just stay with God. That's how you get the peace that passes understanding. That's how you get that love that makes no sense, that happiness and that joy that makes no sense is just by literally staying with Jesus instead of just giving him as little time as possible. This was really interesting because we (laughs) went from relationships. We've done it all. This is the family room for Mother's Day, for mothers to others. Coming up this Sunday, it is going to be Pentecost Sunday. Who's preaching? I am preaching. Oh, oh. I am preaching I no this Pentecost Sunday. I'm pretty excited. Uh, if you're already tuning out, then uh, I'm sorry, but I, I wouldn't miss it. I'm excited about this one. I'm excited. Pentecost Sunday. You know he doesn't Sunday. let me read his notes. I, I mean, you can access them whenever you want, but. Oh, you go lie? <laughs> no, you my because iPad's sitting I on walk, the, on the I table. I walk by as you're making notes and you're like, oh. Oh, I don't like people looking over my shoulder while I'm doing stuff. But okay, when you're writing. Either way, I, if is it fun? Put it in the comments. Is it fun if you're working on something? Somebody's like, "Ooh, what you doing?" And they're just like sitting over your shoulder. Uh, no, I just I don't know. I don't like people looking at things while I'm making it. After the fact, whatever. No, because I went and <laughs> your green it. your green no- <laughs> your green notebook moved, and you were like, "Did you touch my notebook?" And I was like, no, I didn't touch your notebook. And you, you touched my notebook. And it like, it moved somehow. Maybe a cat bumped mm, it or something. cat I bumped it. didn't touch Welcome it. Welcome to the family room where cats move <laughs> notebooks with their opposable I'm thumbs. just saying. And you got upset. So <laughs> That you was go, like six months ago. I remember everything. I know. I'm like an elephant. <laughs> like an elephant? Yeah. Isn't, aren't they, they remember they for, everything? They don't forget faces. I don't know if they remember everything. I don't, how I do I was, people I don't know, know that they don't face. forget face? Like, how do people know that? How do you know that? I don't, I don't Does know Does an elephant about literally elephants. say... They're big and they're gray. I remember their face. Like, how do scientists know that elephants don't forget? You're feeding them. Of course, they're going to come up to you. Uh, they don't remember you, Linda. That You know what? We'll continue that next week. <laughs> next uh, Wednesday on the family room, the elephant in the room. Philip will be back next week, so you won't have to deal <laughs> with me. <laughs> no, it was great. You did great. Good job. I know you were nervous. Uh... And, and everything, uh, but we actually went longer than I do with dad. So great job. Um, that's not a negative comment. That, that was no, like, I was good job. Just... <laughs> um, but yeah, that is the family room uh, Sunday coming up, Pentecost Sunday. Come early. Start filling up the seats. We have Please this weird. Yeah. F- fill it up from the front to the back. Um, there's this weird thing here where we want to come like only within the last five minutes or within the second song that we're singing. But that doesn't matter because we're glad you're here. Oh, anyway. yeah. I'm obviously glad you're here. But it's a lot easier to find a seat if you come early. Yes. So there's that. Um, but we thank you guys. We thank you for joining us tonight. I know it went a little long. Thank you for staying. Uh, we'll see you Sunday. We love you. Have a great rest of the week. Bye. <laughs> Hey, I hope that message spoke to you today. I want to say thank you to everybody who is involved at Family Church and those who help support this ministry. If you would like to get more involved, you can click the link in the description or head to our website, familychurch.social. We would love to connect with you, and you can find all of our social media platforms on our website. 
Also, if this message spoke to you in any way today and you liked it, consider sharing it on your social media in any way that you would like so that we can help reach those far from God and return them to the arms of the Father. We want to see God work through you. We love you. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.